this is John Egan at the University of Hawaii. We're going to begin our series of definitions with one of the very basic definitions that we need to be able to uh, come up with a common terminology for. Um, our first definition in this series will be uh, the definition of a disaster. We want to know what is a disaster. Uh, the term comes into the English language from Latin and breaks down into two parts, disastrum, and uh, this relates to the study of stars, which used to be considered in old times to have a controlling effect on our fate. Uh, so disastrum meant ill star. So the, the simple definition of disaster was that it was a, uh, a bad event caused by the ill, uh, ill-spirited stars. Uh, well, this is not a very useful definition for us in modern times, and, and that for a number of reasons. The notion, one, that, that our fate is controlled by the stars, I think is pre pretty well discounted. Uh, and so we're looking for other ways to understand the phenomenon. Uh, and also, there, there's built into that an idea, the notion that somehow it's beyond our control, so that we have no ability to uh, prepare for, no ability to counteract. Uh, it's simply something that we have to endure, the, the fate of uh, being a victim of a disaster. Well, the modern view is uh, quite a bit different from that, and one of the reasons that we need to establish a definition is so that we can uh, begin to apply a more scientific understanding of the problem. So, looking at a disaster from the modern point of view, one of the curious things is that we don't have a single definition at this time for a, a very basic concept like disaster. Uh, in fact, some of the major organizations that deal with disasters and the responses to disasters, for example, the International Committee of the Red Cross uh, has one definition for disaster, uh, and other large organizations, for example, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, has yet a, a different uh, definition that they use to describe uh, what a disaster is. So during the course of this program, we're going to be looking at a number of those different definitions and comparing them, but we'd like to establish some baseline idea of, of what we consider to be a disaster. And for that, we use uh, the definition that is defined at the Center for Research on the Epidemiology of Disasters, that's in Brussels, uh, and they've had an ongoing program for a number of years to begin to apply a statistical analysis to the phenomenon of disasters. Now, as you can imagine, they're using the term epidemiology uh, in their uh, title, and this implies that they are looking at the locations of disasters and their recurrence, uh, essentially coming up with a statistical approach to uh, the phenomenon of disasters. One of the critical ideas of establishing a statistical approach is you have to begin to categorize what is it that we're counting how do we compare what we're counting to other like or unlike phenomena? So we begin to see a, a rationale for making a clearer definition of disaster. Their definition is quite long, but we'll put this up on a slide for you to read along. Uh, a situation or event which overwhelms local capacity, necessitating a request to national or international level for external assistance, an unforeseen and often sudden event that causes great damage, destruction, and human suffering. Well, this is good. It's much more specific than our, our old definition, but it's not really quite useful enough uh, to get us quite through. So what we want to do is continue that definition. Cred goes on and establishes a numerical characteristics here, uh, and they say that a disaster requires that at least 10 people be reported killed, or that 100 people be reported affected. Alternatively, uh, a declaration, uh, an official declaration of a state of emergency, or a call for international assistance. Now those are four different ideas, four different notions of, of what a disaster might be comprised of. They are not cumulative. Any one of those characteristics, those four points, uh, is enough to trigger the definition. Uh, but you begin to see that this allows us now to say 
this was a bad event, but it wasn't quite a disaster. This one clearly was a disaster. And by being able to apply this sort of an approach, uh, we begin to have the ability to do uh, statistical analysis. Now, one of the reasons that that becomes very important, we go back to this idea of disaster being something that was caused by the stars, you know, ill will by the spirits, uh, this sort of notion. But if we want to move away from that and move into the scientific method, of course the scientific method requires one, that we observe natural phenomena, two, that we describe them, that three, that we measure them, uh, and then we begin to create definitions from those uh, observations, and ultimately the scientific method asks us if we know enough information about this phenomenon, then we can begin to predict things about it. The whole range of activities around uh, disaster prediction become possible once we apply the scientific method to the, the notion of a disaster. So this begins to give us a, a much clearer picture of not only what a disaster is, but why it matters to us that we have a common definition. Another clear reason that we need to have a common definition is as we go through this course and you look around side to side and see who's going through this course with you, you'll see that we have a huge number of people from different disciplines that participate in disaster response, disaster planning, uh, the whole area of uh, mitigation, uh, humanitarian assistance, the whole range of activities that get involved. People are coming from wildly different backgrounds very different educational training, uh, professional skills, uh, their own disciplines. They may be importing definitions into our work zone, uh, and we need to develop a common language. If we're going to have collaboration across disciplinary grounds, we, we need to have some kind of definitional uh, unity so that we all know what we're talking about when we talk together. So these are some of the notions that, that come up when we're talking about disasters. Now one other aspect that is very interesting about the definition that CRED uses is that they include all manner of phenomena. Uh, you notice that this, this business of uh, declaration of, of people affected or people killed, nothing says, uh, not a word said there about what the underlying phenomenon was. It's because their range of activities that could include, be included here are quite broad. Anything from a storm, a hurricane, an earthquake, uh, right through building collapse, fires, uh, and including, very specifically, including armed conflict. So this, again, is a, a very key notion. Uh, in the past, there was a, a, people talked about a distinction, a hard and fast distinction between man-made disasters on one side and natural disasters on the other. Uh, many researchers now, many academics, many people who are thinking about this have really concluded that there is no bright line between a natural disaster and a man-made disaster. Uh, in fact, Dennis Maletti, a uh, recent book, Disaster by Design, he says, we now know enough about how disasters occur that the disasters that we have are the ones that we are allowing to happen. So he's distinctly blurring that line between man-made disasters and natural disasters. Again, it's very useful to begin to understand that we can create a definition, we can adopt a definition that is inclusive of all of these needs. The need to have uh, all events, the all hazards approach incorporated within one definition. The need to have uh, the ability to use statistical and scientific analysis when we discuss disasters. And the need to develop a common language for collaboration. So, for the purposes of this course, uh, we intend to adopt the definition uh, provided to us by the Center for Research on the Epidemiology of Disasters. We'll compare it to other definitions when they arise, but that's the, the baseline definition that we 